not for the foreseeable future will passenger travel across the Atlantic be as quick or as stylish. Paul Davis, ITV News, Heathrow Airport. My colleague Mary Nightingale is at JFK Airport in New York tonight. Mary, tomorrow is going to be really quite a day, isn't it? It is, Trevor, it is indeed. Uh, I'm here at JFK and we're expecting Concorde to arrive any time now, ready for the big day tomorrow, that final homecoming. BA002 will leave New York at around noon your time and will touch down at Heathrow at 4 o'clock. On board will be 100 specially invited guests. Now, BA are keeping the actual guest list fairly quiet, but we do know that stars like Joan Collins and Sir David Frost will be on board. All of them will be people who've flown Concorde many times over the years. Well, as the New York flight lands, there will also be two order the aircraft's final fare-paying passengers, enjoying a last taste of supersonic travel before the plane retires tomorrow. Nicholas Witchell was at Heathrow to see it take off. Leaving her home port for the final time on a commercial flight, 27 years after she came into service, the mighty roar of supersonic travel is about to be silenced. Among those checking in for the final fare-paying flight to New York were some who'd flown many times, others for whom it will be the first and only time. All, though, felt a sadness. I've been on Concorde 70 times, and this is a very sad day. In many ways, we're going back. We're not going forward. The same feeling is apparent in the hangars, where Concorde's engineers toiled hard to restore the plane's reputation after the Paris crash, only to see it now fall victim to the international downturn in air travel. It's the first time in aviation history we're actually taking a backward step. Uh, mankind is not used to doing that, and as, a, as a, an engineer used to de technological development, it's the first time we've actually stopped and taken a step back. How different it was at the start. This was Concorde 002, the British prototype in 1972. At the controls, the Duke of Edinburgh. 31 years later, he paid his own tribute to the plane. I think a phenomenal technical achievement. I mean, when you think of the complications and the, and the, the extent to which practically everything was novel about her, that, uh, um, I mean, it was a remarkable achievement. And, it, and I think it, it was in the, in the tradition of some of the really great engineering triumphs of, of people, uh, engineers and designers in this country. But years of aeronautical excellence and majestic spectacle are no good when they don't also make economic sense. And so in less than 24 hours now, this cockpit, this aircraft, will be little more than a museum piece. Ahead of its time when it came into service, before its time, many might say, in being taken into retirement. As the last commercial flight of the world's first supersonic passenger plane headed out of London tonight, who can say when the world will see its successor and passengers will once again be able to purchase a ticket and fly at twice the speed of sound? Nicholas Witchell, BBC News, at Heathrow Airport. And Jeremy Bowen is at New York's JFK Airport waiting for Concorde to arrive. Uh, it's not quite the last flight tonight, is it? Because it's got to come back to Heathrow. What are the plans for the, uh, the flight tomorrow? Well, it's, uh, it's an invitations-only flight, though there's one man on board who actually paid for a ticket. He booked it months ago. He didn't know it was going to be the last flight. A beer preparing something special, I think, for tomorrow. One thing they say about the last uh, few months since Concorde was, uh, was the, since the news came out that Concorde was being pulled, uh, is that the passenger profile has changed. Far more people now having the trip of a lifetime. So even though Concorde's running a bit late tonight, I think they'll probably be having fun. Jeremy, thanks very much indeed. Huge moment in the history of aviation, as you say, about 20 minutes ago, the last um, Concorde carrying paying passengers left Heathrow. It uh, flew out of the southern uh, runway just over there and uh, flew directly over our heads with a, a huge afterburner glowing in the sky. Now, we've got a number of people here who turned out in the cold to wa patiently watch it. Um, how did you feel when it went overhead? Brilliant, brilliant. Very, very good. Yes, excellent. Very good. Yeah. What, what is it about Concorde? That, um, makes people come out to watch. It's just fantastic to watch. It's the fact nothing has beaten it. It's five years older than I am and I'm 30 in February and they still haven't got any plane to match it as far as speed or um, anything like that. And the sound it makes is just incredible. And it will be, it is a sad occasion. This it is, is the very last sad. one carrying, paying very, passengers. Very, very sad. Very sad. I cried when it went over and I'll admit it. 
and tomorrow, of course, it is the last flight altogether. Three will come in uh, to land at about four o'clock. Yeah. Will you shed a tear? Of course. I shed lots of tears, like <laughs> I did tonight. But that's if they let me out at work to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're listening, let me leave work on time. Yes. <laughs> well, I hope your uh, plea doesn't fall on deaf ears. Now, it's also, of course, a good time to capture those pictures for the albums. Uh, lots of people have been coming out with their camera equipment. And I understand as well that you saw the first ever Concorde take off in Britain many years ago. The first British one, yeah, 9th of April, that was 69. And then I was here again for the first... Uh, uh, British Airways flight to uh, Bahrain, 21st of January, 76. And how did you feel to see the last one come oh, over? Oh, I mean, really, I'm smiling now, but I mean, I really feel so sad because, you know, the reheats and all that sort of stuff is gorgeous. It looks fantastic, and the technology is amazing. Even now, it's amazing. It's okay. brilliant. Thank you very much. So it will be a tearful occasion for many people. Now, thousands of uh, people are expecting to gather tomorrow to see the last flights. Three will come into land at Heathrow at about four o'clock. Three consecutive landings at about four o'clock tomorrow.